What's up, amateur anglers? Welcome back to another podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Simons. This is my wife. I'm the other host, Keisha Simons. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a good one for you today. So today we're going to talk about um, something I've wanted to talk to you guys about for a little while now. Uh, the first episode that we had, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I wanted to expand on it. It's uh, how to make a living in the fishing industry. So, me, myself, I'm an outfitter and I'm a, I'm a guide. That's how I got my start in it. But I wanted to talk to Keisha and with you guys about making a living in the fishing industry. I know it's a dream for a lot of you guys to uh, you know, have a career in this industry, whether it be fishing or hunting. And uh, I think it'd be a good topic to, to really go over today. Yeah, I think it's a great idea and also that would allow people to do what they love every single day and you've had the privilege of being able to do that so yeah we wanted to let you all know a little bit about how he did it we kind of talked about that in the first episode of this um podcast so if you haven't watched it already go back and watch that we're an apple now we're an apple podcast now so Big yes so if you're we say watch but it could also mean listen as it's a podcast you can watch us on youtube you can listen to us on spotify apple music amazon music where else iHeartRadio. a bunch of them the spotify and apple and then youtube the main ones anywhere you get your podcasts yeah and so, so. if you're new here the amateur anglers podcast um our whole goal with this show is to try and engage new anglers, new outdoorsmen, um, into the sport of fishing or hunting. Mm-hmm. So, and because of Jaden having so much experience in the outdoor industry, whether it be guiding, um, running his own business, mm. fishing tournaments, things like that, we figured we'd create this podcast to talk a little bit about it, answer all your questions, and... Um, just kind of have some fun with it. Yeah, and so the way that we're doing that is that if you're watching this right now um, on our YouTube channel, you can drop a comment and ask us any question. Uh, any question about anything, and that's how we put you on the show is we say your question on, on air, I answer it, Keisha answers it. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you want to be anonymous, you don't want to like comment on the video, you can always message us on Instagram or send us an email. All of our contact info is on uh, the Northwest Outfitters Instagram page. So it's nwoutfitters.ca is the Instagram handle. So you can do it that way as well. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed us on any of the podcast platforms, go ahead and do that now. Yeah, we've had a few messages now anonymous, anonymously, so yeah. yeah, feel free to message us anyway, and we'll do our best to answer your questions, get you, uh, and get you into fishing. Yeah, so let's get started. So what were you wanting to start off with today? I know that like you want to talk about how to get into the fishing <clears throat> industry one way or another, but there's so many ways to go about that, so maybe start off on... on I know that you already explained this in the other um, episode, but briefly go over how you did it. Yeah, so I'll start off with the different avenues. So obviously there's the one that I went down, which is the guiding and outfitting side. Um, but there's also, you know, th there's entrepreneur entrepreneurial <laughs> avenues. Um <laughs> But you don't have to be an entrepreneur to make a living in the fishing industry or outdoor industry at all. Um, so there's no. a lot of companies, that, let's say, for example, um, like a fishing lure company. You can work for them in marketing through their social media, um, lure design. You can even be like an accountant and work directly with a fishing company. Um, and that's how you can get your foot in the door and maybe see how you want to work it out from there. But like I said, I, I went down the guiding route. You could work directly for a company. You can start a company so you can be an yes. entrepreneur, um, whether that, and there's so many different ways you can, ways you can go with that. You can, obviously yeah. the big, most attractive one would be like, probably working at a lodge would be like the most I don't know, the most attractive way to start in the fishing industry. Honestly, I feel like that 
makes the most sense to me. Like on my side of you, things, but then you also think about like I don't know if you're in a in a city and you're not necessarily close to yeah um you know a bunch of lodges or don't really have the means to travel for that yeah or if you have like kids or family or whatever and you can't really go live at a lodge all summer or you don't want to yeah. um i guess there are a lot of other ways to get into it yeah so like out of college you can you know apply it and directly start working for a fishing company of some yeah. sort um but then the other one that i wanted to talk to about that i don't know i don't really think of as often but we're literally doing it right now is social media yeah is the yeah i know it's hard because you don't really think of that as um a career path but it's been such a long time Mm. now where you really can make that your career and i it still kind of blows my mind that you can make money on uh youtube or you know through instagram or social media but it it is very real and it is, and it's probably the most attainable. You started making a little bit on social media, like not a whole lot yet, but we're growing and hoping to, you know, gr- grow that even more and be able to. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know where I was going with that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think social media is is amazing to make a living in the fishing industry. Uh, you can take yeah. a couple of different angles on it. Um, I'll kind of yeah. dive into what we're doing here a little bit more. And talk about mm-hmm. like, you know, the strategy of how, of how we're starting to do things now, mm-hmm. and and share that with you because, um, a lot of a lot of people think that with social media, you're getting a lot of your revenues from the ad revenue. Let's say from YouTube, for example, you're getting ad revenue from the videos that you're. Uh, like YouTube AdSense, it's called, Mm -hmm. uh, from posting videos. So there's a few different um, metrics on how to measure how much you're making. Um, The one is RPM, and it's, uh, I forget. It's like how many views or something, right? Per, it's it's basically like how much, how many dollars you're making per thousand views on your videos. Right. And so... A lot of people associate the money that you're making through social media with what you're making directly from like a YouTube AdSense, but in but reality, really, that's so small compared that's, to what you can be making from like brand partnerships and things like that, collaborations, and um, that's much a much bigger side of it. Yeah, so that's a smaller side by far, and so I think a lot of people who try to do the social media thing, like you can make money through Facebook as well. Mm-hmm. like meta yeah, yeah. facebook instagram they'll they'll pay you as well for your engagement but mm-hmm. uh yeah it, it can be a little bit intimidating to start it and then looking at your numbers it's quite deflating um as you're trying to grow because you're putting so much work into it and you're not really seeing much in return yeah um so now you can talk about like looking at um you know working with companies to help try and um well, well, people like to promote their products and people are paying for marketing through, you know, people used to pay for commercials on TV or um, like big sponsorships at events and stuff like that, which of course companies like brands still do. But I think that a big, a way bigger part of it now is brands like to work with influencers. I don't really like that name, but like content creators yeah right so as like an example i think a really good one is i have a friend that owns a lodge in manaki and we were talking on the phone the other day he was saying that you know in the height of tv shows when let's say like your babe winkleman or your bob azumi um i know bob still has his tv show but um everything's kind of moving away from the television side of things and it's moving towards youtube um, mm-hmm. YouTube is like the new TV. So if you're it's like nobody watches TV anymore, people just have like yeah YouTube or like Netflix or something like that. Yeah. So people he had have cable. <laughs> so for example, he would pay Babe Winkleman at the time in the '90s or the '80s, whatever time that was, to come up, <laughs> do a fishing show there, and within you know a week of it being posted, he'd have like a thousand calls emails whatever it was at the time i guess email would have been like a 
Well, because really, like, the internet wasn't really a thing. Yeah, so, so you don't calls. hear, if you're looking for, like, a fishing lodge, you're not able to just Google, like, a fishing lodge in this area. Like, you have to go and look at newspapers or um, magazines or, or TV shows. shows, right, to hear about these places. Um, so things have just changed so much. Yeah. And, and yeah, so that was super effective then. And it still has its place now. But like I said, everything's moving towards the YouTube side. So you're starting to see um, places like that, like a lodge or, you know, a fishing mm-hmm. company or a construction company or something like that. They're, they're looking to spend more of their advertising dollars on creators that are on YouTube. And so that's a great opportunity for you if you are an angler or somebody that is looking to make a living not even in the fishing industry any industry really uh, as a as a youtube creator or just any social media job in general um youtube mm-hmm. definitely seems to have a bigger impact on them um through the long form videos but then yeah. there's also different strategies you can use to grow a lot faster which is uh, i was a little reluctant to start on uh but keisha i'll let you dive in on the shorts <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, if you've watched the first podcast episode, um, Jaden likes to, like, not listen to my ideas, and then a few months down the road... I listen to them, I just don't think they're a great idea at the time. You shut them down, and then a few months down the road, you just all of a sudden have this epiphany, and you're like, you know what would be a great idea? He brings me this great idea. And it's literally, like, word for word what I tried telling him, like, months ago. And he shut it down straight away. But then when he brings it to me, it's a great idea. It's the best idea he's ever had. (laughs) So, for an example of one of those great ideas that Jaden had, (laughs) was... He thought, you know, YouTube shorts. When I brought the idea to him... Well, my, my whole thing with it was that, like, I remember, you know, being on my phone and I'm getting notifications of, like, somebody that I watch. Don't say who. <laughs> I don't know. Just some, somebody that I watch in, in general. <clears throat> and I'm getting all these notifications. Like, they post a short, they post a short, they post a short. And I just got to the point where I stopped watching them because it was almost, like, annoying me. But, right, which I understand. But that was r- really early on. Like now, you can go on to YouTube and you can actually just watch it, the shorts as if you would reels on Instagram or TikToks on TikTok, and you just scroll through them, right? But also, you don't have to check each notification. If you get it, you just swipe it away. I know, but my whole thing was I didn't want to annoy anybody that was like following me because I thought like I kind of like. But that's also you, like, and that's one of my points, like my things that I was trying to explain to him is like. That is you. A lot of people, they want the notification. That's why they subscribe, because they want to watch your content. And maybe the one that you were watching was just not one that was that interesting to you. So you were getting irritated with all the notifications. And I know that now. Of the shorts. I know that now. (laughs) But when I brought that idea to him, he shut it down. And I, I really fought for it. I was like, no. Like, I made some good points. Like... There's not always, he says, well, I posted this on Instagram already. Why do I need to post it on YouTube? Um, And so I kind of explained to him, well, not all the same people are on Instagram as they are on YouTube. And also YouTube has a different algorithm than Instagram. So whoever's seeing your stuff on Instagram might not be the same people that are seeing it on YouTube. And that will get you even more organic growth than what you were getting just with the one platform and the shorts. So he started posting shorts and it gained him quite a few followers, or I mean subscribers, pretty quickly. And it allowed him to get to that 1,000 followers and how much is it? 400 watch hours or something? 4,000. 4,000 watch hours, 100, or sorry, 1,000 followers, um, which is what you need on YouTube in your first, like, that's how you start making ad revenue on YouTube. So that allowed him to get to that point was because I finally convinced him, I guess, or he came up with the idea eventually on his own that that was a good idea. Yeah. But anyways, um, (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know where you, how you asked me that, but that like, anyways, the the shorts (laughs) give you tons of engagement 
Um, yeah. Tons of views compared to any other piece of content that you can post. All the platforms are pushing it right now. Mm -hmm. So let's say I post... Uh, and by shorts, you mean shorts, Instagram reels, or TikTok. That's a minute or less video. A, a video that's a minute or less that you can post on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube all together. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say and they don't all perform the same on on every one like sometimes no, one sometimes will it's totally pop different off yeah on youtube shorts mm -hmm. but instagram tiktok it did terrible yeah and then it'll switch but mm -hmm. the engagement that you get with it like I'll, it, it's not uncommon for me to post a video and get 20,000 views on a short in a week yeah and that's that's pretty common like every week i'll get a video that does some somewhere around there the other ones get 3 or 4,000 something like that yeah. Uh, but you have the one that gets up to 20,000. If you think about that compared to like a regular post that you make, just a photo, like it's just your followers that see that. Unless somebody finds you on the explore page, but nobody actually looks like, at hashtags to find you. Not even hashtags necessarily, but like nobody even really like scrolls through their like what's it called? The explore page or whatever on Instagram. Like I don't, anyways. I don't know if anyone does. Yeah. If you do, please comment and let me know because I honestly don't think anyone actually does that. I don't know. Anyways, it's just one of those things, though, where you get 20,000 people to watch a video of yours. There's a really good chance that they're going to look at your profile and start to watch other things. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you can engage somebody to go to your profile and watch something, mm -hmm. they have a really good chance of following you. And that's well, not like, even necessarily that, but on shorts and even on Instagram reels and everything... If you're if they're watching that short little clip and they want to see more, like it's very common that they'll just hit subscribe like right off of that short, which is so easy. It's the button's right there. They don't have to even go to your profile. They could just subscribe without even going to your profile, and there you go. You have another subscriber f for nothing. Yeah, and then they're just part of our they're they're Community. in the they're in the club now. They're in the amateur anglers club. And then <laughs> they see more the next time I post it. And then they'll actually, let's say they haven't looked at my profile yet, they'll look at my profile. And mm -hmm. then they'll go and find my YouTube. Watch other And then they'll start to watch the longer form videos. And mm -hmm. then they'll find our podcast. Mm -hmm. And I watched somebody on YouTube. It, it's, he's inspired me a lot through a lot of this too. <laughs> jaden has got a crush. He's got a little man crush. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> he says this too. It's like as soon as you can get somebody to spend an hour with you, uh, like in a setting like this like if you watch if somebody watches an hour-long podcast the the chances that they're gonna you know keep watching you every time and support anything that you're supporting is huge mm -hmm. and so that's what you're looking for um when you're looking for your brand deals uh through you want like a dedicated following so through that like, you find those people, I think, through, like, easily, or not easily, but you, you do find, like, the super dedicated followers through, you know, a podcast compared to maybe, like, short videos, because if that person's going to sit there and watch this podcast or listen to this podcast for 45 minutes or whatever it ends up being, then they're, they, they're growing to, like, it feels like you're kind of hanging out, you know, like, you become you're not becoming friends, but it kind of is like you're becoming friends. Like, we might not know you, you might not know us, but it feels like we actually know each other. Yeah. So that's, like, how you really get a dedicated following or, like, engaged followers. And, and people who are going to continue watching your videos. Right. And then this is something that we were talking about earlier, too, was even if your podcast, let's say, we we're just talking about the podcast right now. This mm -hmm. is going to be about an hour long. If, uh... If we get, let's say, 200 views on this podcast alone, it's pretty easy to look at that and kind of be disappointed with it. But we were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, if you were to take this same setting and behind the camera, there's a room, like a gymnasium, full of 200 people. Mm -hmm. And we're doing this podcast speaking directly to them, with them. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. That's huge. Yeah, like, social like, the media... dynamic there is so much more different. Yeah, social if you're media that is way, very skewed on, like, the perception of how many people... Right, and if that person, like, 200 people, mm -hmm. were to come to a gym to watch you mm -hmm. do this, mm -hmm. that's crazy. It is crazy. Like, 200, 400, like, that, that really does seem like 
nothing for views, but it actually is a lot of people, especially because those 200 or 400 people, most of them actually watch the whole thing. Yeah. And you can see that in your analytics on YouTube or whatever, um, whatever platform you're on, you can see that. And those people are pretty much all watching the whole thing. That's a long time. <laughs> can you hear me through this, do you think? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I just feel like I'm really far away from it. Yeah, no, we can... We have a new setup, as you can tell, if you've watched our other videos. We're trying to... In the next one, I'm hoping that we have, like, a whole new setup that actually works we're well. Gonna, we're going to level up. We're going to have different camera angles. <laughs> we're hoping to. Keisha's going to hang just... from the ceiling. <laughs> no, I'm it's not. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> no, our house would fall down. Um... But no, we're hoping to have a different setup that actually makes more sense and is um, more pleasing to the eye. <laughs> Just something that's easier to watch or like listening is going to be the same, but on our YouTube channel, it'll just be easier to watch. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping. So we're going to have a new setup again next week. Um, hopefully we get that figured out by then, yeah. but... We kind of went on a little tangent on the social media side of of the fishing industry i kind of want to that is a big part though there's so many big like influencers or content creators videographers people getting into the fish fishing industry or making a career out of the fishing industry through youtube like some of your favorite youtube channels like sam sobe or what's that other guy um he's like brown hair fishing more <laughs> no that one too i guess you're talking john b yes yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. yeah i always you, forget his name you can have a lot of fun with it too you just make fishing videos yeah and it can be as little as that or it can be like you can try to teach people things mm -hmm. um you can start That's a podcast kind of like what you're doing is you like to kind yeah. of teach as you're making your videos that's my goal is i that's my whole thing is the education mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. i'm not very entertaining i don't think or well, i don't I really try to be entertaining but it's more of like <laughs> I, I think it comes from the side of how you're a fishing guide like if someone's not first a fishing guide they might just go on youtube and just want to have fun and fish which is totally fine that's really great it's really entertaining but for you I think the that's teaching like. aspect of it comes from your background in guiding and that's how i like to provide value is through mm -hmm. what i can teach people okay so i want to roll back to um like obviously my story with guiding but the second part i, I was talking about like working for a fishing company or working for like a lodge nope oh you mean like the like okay, a, yeah, yeah. for example i have another company it's called whitetail supply co so i sell deer attractants deer feeds deer supplements um for whitetails yes. uh, and i'm just using this in a, as an example so you can kind of get an idea of what uh, you can kind of expect to get as a job in that sort of field. So I would put this in the category of like a lure company on the fishing side and obviously a bait. Honestly, any sort of fishing gear like tackle, yeah, rods, um, fishing gear, even. like clothing, like rain gear and stuff like that. Yeah. So one of the biggest things is like web. Um, it, one of the biggest things is web design. So a uh, graphic designer making logos designing packaging that's a huge one for me the other big one would be um, like product development so we're looking at the actual feed blends what we need to do what we would like to see in them um, bringing them in once they're done testing them making sure it works feels looks acts as we want <laughs> and then uh, there's the whole manufacturing side as well. So some companies might automate it a little more. Some companies, like, for example, you could get a job with me just bagging feed. I'm not looking to hire anybody in that department. I'm good. <laughs> but they, You've got it figured out a much faster Yeah, but if you just want to get your foot in the door, like, you can literally start off with a minimum wage job just to get your foot in the door, work your way up. You can learn, you can learn you a can lot learn through so much. each, like, smaller job and move forward from the knowledge that you learn through that. Like if you're actually willing to learn and develop yourself through mm -hmm. through that job and with that company, you, you can you can accomplish a lot. Yeah, I think one thing that some people might think um, is that it's a very easy 
thing to get into and be successful in and have a career doing something you love, like fishing. I know that not everyone would think that way, but I feel like some young guys, they come up and they see, like, people on YouTube, um, and they think, like, oh, that's so easy. He's making tons of money, and it's, like, takes no time at all, and he gets to do whatever he loves every day, all day. But that's not true. That's not the case. Yeah, I do get that a lot. Like, oh, yeah. you're living the dream. Like, yes, I am. Like, and in I, a sense, but you I do work not take your it for granted off. Because... <laughs> If I were to take another job or, or even think about working anywhere else, not a chance. I don't think you could ever again, honestly. I like, I don't think you could. No, so there's that side of it, but it is a ton of work. It's yeah. a ton of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a ton of stress at times. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it's all worth it. It is. I think so too. But that also goes with the um, starting small and working your way up with um, just any other company that's associated with fishing like the lure companies in general like if you go and you start with one of the smaller you know like minimum wage jobs and you slowly work your way up but like the amount of knowledge that you learn in that time from you know starting at the you know down here at the bottom at the bottom um you can work your way up and even if it's taking a long time just make sure that you're learning as much as you possibly can in that time that it takes to get up yeah like if you're this is just general advice mm -hmm. i guess but if mm -hmm. you're starting small and you're trying to go and grow bigger uh, you mm -hmm. have to put the extra effort in you have to take those extra steps to show your worth to show that you are trying Mm -hmm. to try and learn yourself and actually grow as a person yeah um, you can't just a, start working this doesn't somewhere. need to be like a lecture or anything no 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 but i'm just saying like you can't just start somewhere and work for two months and expect to be a partner without putting any uh, uh any um any money into the company or any value into the company in any okay. other way i see where that's going <laughs> moving on <laughs> I guess we'll go back to the actual guiding part. So if, uh, like, guiding for me was the obvious choice of how I wanted to get into the fishing industry. Just growing up here, like, we live in Kenora. It's on Lake of the Woods. We've never heard of it before. It's a small town on one of the most beautiful lakes that you could ever ever lay eyes on it's uh it's got amazing fishing everything is so diverse there's so many different species you can target trophy bass walleye lake trout pike musky perch what whatever you want burbs burbs <laughs> burbits on this lake so growing up here and fishing you know I, I i didn't see any other way to do it other than to just like fish for a living like how freaking cool would that be and as a kid like i used to watch i guess this is a good story so i used to watch like jeff gustafson had his fishing show when i was a kid and this was i don't know around 2010 i guess when i was 12 so in between like 8 and 12 <laughs> you were such a little baby yeah i would uh it's sunday morning on cjbn i would watch it every 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 sunday morning um i'd watch everything that he had uh, when we had school projects, like I would always like, what do you want to be when you want to grow up? I want to be Jeff Gustafson. I don't know if I had ever said that. <laughs> I had one project where it was like, who's your idol? And it was definitely Jeff. Yeah. And that's I don't, cute. That's, I don't know that's if I've so ever told cute. him that, but I don't think you have, he'd because probably, you'd be like so embarrassed to tell him. Yeah, I would, but he'd probably make a, he would think it's, he'd probably think he, it's he'd cute. He'd think it's cool <laughs> or cute, yeah. And then make a little joke or something, I'm sure. But. Probably. You'd be like, wow, that's awkward. <laughs> but yeah, so as a kid, like, that's that's who I saw. That's who I watched. That's who I wanted to be. I, I that's saw who you learned from. Fishing tournaments. I wanted to do that. So um, you could say, like, a, mm -hmm. a lot of it was kind of modeled behind that and being a fishing guide was part of it. So I, I wanted to be a fishing guide. And when I got to be a fishing guide, like that's all I wanted to do forever. And being like, I started when I was 16. So I was young and I didn't really, like I was trying to think of my future a little bit. I thought I like, you know, this is it. I made it like, 
this is great money as somebody who's 16. I love doing this. Like, why would I ever not want to? Um, obviously, things have changed since since then, but yeah. And I, but I still guide. Like, I still do that all summer long. I do that all winter long. Like, <laughs> you do I do that all the time. I do that all year that's long. Your life. Still, that's my job. <laughs> um, but yeah, things have changed. But I still, I still love it. Like, I get to my my typical day now. Like at a lodge, it's different. I kind of explained that story, but. My typical day now, like having my own company with my own clients, like I'll get an email, let's say in February. Hey, we're looking to come uh, fishing for a day. It's me and my two sons. We're coming down to the lake. Like, where do you suggest we stay? Uh, do you have any availability in this month or this week or this weekend? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Set it all up. We're going for a day of fishing from like... Uh, it's typically like eight hours is my full day of fishing. I don't offer offer half days anymore, but my full day of fishing is eight hours or so. It's not like we start at eight, we're done at four, not a minute less, not a minute more. <laughs> no, like sometimes it like goes for an hour longer if the yeah. fishing's really good. You know, like it's not like you're just set to the schedule, but it's just the ma- the main thing is that you don't offer four hour days or whatever half days anymore just because it's not worth your time or money like, yeah it's not worth it i'd rather just it like it costs too much to take each it costs you the same amount to take someone out for half a day as it would for a whole day like so, i basically have to charge for a full day but just take them out for the half day if they want to i tell day, them yeah. like i can take you out for four hours but it's mm-hmm. just the same it's price. gonna cost the same yeah anyways uh but yeah my typical day for like a full day fishing is let's say they those people are coming from winnipeg they're driving in the morning of because they decided they didn't want to get anywhere to stay. Yeah. So it's like, at a lodge, it was always like 8 to 5. Every time. This time, like, hey, we're driving in from Winnipeg. Like, we're not, like, super keen on fishing. Like, we don't really care uh, when he thinks a good time. I'm like, well, the earlier the better. But, like, if, if you are driving in, like, don't wake up crazy early. So they'll drive in, come in at, like, 9.30, sometimes 10.00. Go fishing for the day, have our shore lunch, or do whatever we're going to do middle of the day. Um, And then a lot of the times we're back by somewhere between four and six. Um, A lot of people don't mind, like, coming back two hours early. It's usually they call it. They're like, yeah, this has been awesome. Yeah, I think I've had enough. Like, Like, it's a long day in the sun for someone who's not used to that. Yeah, but it, it's it's great, and I get to meet a lot of really good people. I get to make a lot of great connections doing it, too. And I think that's the part that I like about it the most now is being able to make connections with people um, because I mm-hmm. find I, I just I love I love doing that, make make connections with people. And well, you meet so many see them interesting year year. people like doing this because, well, for them, a lot of the time, well, most... I guess all of the time when they're coming out and going with you for a guiding day, they are, it's like vacation basically for them. It's something fun. It's something new or maybe not new, but it's something fun that they enjoy doing. It's like a a vacation day. Yeah. It's a fun outing. So these people, they're not like necessarily in the fishing industry at all whatsoever. No, most, (laughs) most of my clients now that I'm doing it myself, Mm-hmm. I would say half of them have never fished before the first time they come to see me. Yeah. I get a lot of repeat, like most of my clients are repeat customers year after year now. Mm-hmm. But starting out and even now, if I'm taking new ones, most of the time, at least like one person in the boat has never fished before. And then there's mm-hmm. one person that usually organizes it that has fished like two or three times, like at the yeah, cottage like when they, they were a kid. Fished. And they just want to come fishing for the day. Yeah, so yeah. what I was kind of getting at, though, is that these people, sometimes it's, you know, a company that's doing, like, a team building activity or something that hires you to take them and their, like, employees out for the day. Yeah, there's Or, like, something like that, where it's just so many different, like, people with so many different experiences and, um, like, so much knowledge coming from every direction. So it's really cool to meet those people and hear their story and usually you learn something new from them but you also through that you make the connection and it may have some sort of impact on how you move forward with your businesses as well like they would teach you something through that side of things yeah i've had a lot of business business people hire me to take them fishing and Mm -hmm. 
that's it's it's great to be able to talk to them yeah. it's uh but like i said making the connections and having conversations like that is probably one of my favorite parts about the job now mm-hmm. but yeah having like just it's so flexible now is kind of what i was trying to get at it's so flexible now to to be able to do it by myself mm-hmm. and that's how it looks like like after after you get established you have a lot more freedom to do what well, you'd you like get to, to do. You get to choose what days and then you're it actually, working as well. Yeah, and I get, get to, to choose. You get to fish your like, tournaments because you don't have to work on specific days. You can take the jobs you want. Like, obviously, if you're, like, really hurting for money and you need to take every possible day that you can book up, then, then that's I do. one thing. But, well, not necessarily, though. Like, there's a lot of days that you do not book trips just because you have a tournament. Yeah, but that's that's part of it too. Is like, it now, allows you to do that. It, it allows me to do that. So, yeah. um, it's it's been a blessing to be able to do what I do, and you know, I I don't take it for granted. But sometimes you find yourself take it for granted, taking it for <laughs> for granted, granted, <laughs> granted. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So it sounds like you said. Do you have anything to add? Take it for granted. Because yeah. um, that's like that's basically all that I wanted to cover as far as making a living in the fishing industry. We covered like the three big ones, which would be guiding, working for a company, slash starting a company, um, and then the social media side of things. I think we covered most of, or if not all of, everything that I wanted to. Of, there's like so many subcategories within those two. So... I mean... There's... Yeah, okay. So there's commercial fishing. That would be another one. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that industry at all. No, you've never been involved in that. No, um, but then another cool story is... So here on Lake of the Woods, they did um, a mapping project a couple of years ago through Lake Master. Okay. And so <laughs> what... <laughs> driving, driving by a hotel in town, you'd see like, I don't know, there's 20 boats that were there at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, all summer long, like from May until the end of September. Where, sorry? Uh, it was at the Days Inn. Oh. So they have these boats with like the jet engines. Some of them have props. Um, I didn't directly talk to them, but a few people that I knew did. And they were doing the mapping project for Lake of the Woods. So they were hired by, I guess it was Humminbird, who owns Lake Master. Mm-hmm. And they, they were mapping the lake. So they were taking their boats out, driving back and forth, mapping. Um, there's another company, it's called Angler's Edge Mapping. Uh, they do their map for Lawrence. Uh, they have part of Lake of the Woods done. They have a lot of the smaller lakes done in Western Canada. Uh, and then here in Northwest Ontario, but they, uh, they have that as well. So I know that there's people that work for them just as full-time surveyors. Is that Rob? Yeah, it's Rob. Okay. So they work for a Angler's Edge Mapping and they're full-time surveyors driving boats around. That'd be cool. Which is like I feel like that would be more ideal than guiding. Such a cool job. You don't like if you're not a people person, go survey a lake. No kidding. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. that is really cool. Actually, I I feel like that would be. Well, no, there's a lot of parts to guiding that are a lot of that's a lot of fun and and exciting and stuff, but I feel like I got an idea. What? Sorry. Go ahead. I'll finish no, after. No. I my I wasn't gonna. Be you you were anything. just rambling. I was rambling. Okay. What I do. The other part that I kind of forgot about, like this is what I wanted to do, when I was in high school before I started guiding, was I was dead set I was gonna go to college and I was gonna be a conservation officer. Really? Yeah. I don't think you told me that. Yeah. That was. When did you want to do that? That was what I wanted to do. Like when you were how old? Like up until I was sixteen. Maybe even when I was sixteen, I still maybe wanted to go and do that. So I wanted to go to college, become a conservation officer, and help protect the resources. That's another great way to get into um, mm-hmm. the fishing and hunting industry like that. I would definitely that's say that's it. That's another way that you can literally be out on the water every day. There's a lot of other depart- like um, positions open at departments of natural resources. Like there's, uh, you know, wildlife technicians. There's What was it that Alina did last summer? I think she was just like a fisheries tech or something like that. I don't know. They were like testing the water. And whether it be like, like I think maybe. whether it be science, you could be a, a technician, mm-hmm. you can be conducting surveys. There are so many different opportunities for you at yeah. 
the Ministry of Natural Resources or Department of Natural Resources, depending where you are, um, that allow you to get your foot in the door and, and make a, a living fishing, hunting, or being outside. So I think that's that's the other one that I kind of forgot to Yeah, that's to talk a huge about. one. That's huge, too. And I think that's probably where I'll end that. Like, we'll end the, this thread on that. Okay. But if you have, like, if you guys are watching and you know of any other ways that you can make money in the fishing industry or hunting industry, outdoor industry, whatever, uh, drop it in the comments. Because I'd yes. like to... I'd like to divulge expand expand on on it on all of that yeah on the next one or or something like that yeah do you have you told me that you were gonna tell a story a client story today for this podcast today yeah we're in a new segment now we've we've moved on from the main you know the bulk of it you're gonna tell a story okay (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't have, have to be the best or the worst or whatever. It's just, I want it to be a story. I don't have one in mind. The only thing that comes to my mind right now is a lot of it happened at my first guiding job. So, <laughs> <laughs> the... Please go watch the first one to hear the best story ever. But... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> do that after I tell this. Yeah. So, in the lake that we were fishing, like I was guiding... The main attraction for everybody to come was smallmouth bass. The majority of our clients came from Kentucky. I don't know why. (laughs) Such a random place. Pretty, yeah. For, like, coming here. Pretty random place. Anyways, like, three quarters of the people that were were there were from Kentucky. Hmm. So, there was, like, and they're coming for smallmouth bass. They get a lot of largemouth bass where they live. They want to come here for the smallmouth bass. Smallmouth bass fishing in June is incredible. You have the pre-spawn spawn and then the post-spawn going on. So all the fish are up shallow and on beds or regarding the spawn. Um, So had this couple and my buddy Cole Forsyth, we were guiding the same group. I believe it was the same group of people, but... There was like four of them, so we had to split two and two in each boat. So it was him with two people, me with two people. And we heard a story and saw a picture of a smallmouth that was like huge. I, I don't know if they weighed it or not, but it was over five pounds, like for sure. Mm-hmm. And we got wind of it, kind of like where it was, the general area of it. And it was very distinct, like on the side of it. It looked deformed, like it had been like the scales on it. If I find a picture, I'm going to throw it up on the YouTube channel, kind of overlaying this right now. But the side of it, like it looked deformed on the side. Okay. Looked like a basketball, but its scales were really weird in a in a really odd formation. Yeah. Like it had been like cut or like. Yeah, like it healed from yeah, some sort like of something traumatic that happened. event. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so. Uh, We go to this area, me and Cole, Mm -hmm. and they catch this fish on the other side of the bay. It was on a tree, like, I don't know, 500 yards away from where I was fishing at the time. And so we went over, we took a a picture of it or whatever. It was the biggest smallmouth. Like, a really big smallmouth here is three and a half pounds. Like... On that lake, you don't really see them over three and a half pounds, especially in the springtime. So to see one that was five pounds, like a legit five pounder, crazy. So I took a picture of it, went back uh, the next day. They were there for a few days. So we went back to the same area because the fishing was really good. Like we caught a bunch of fish there as well. So we went back to the same area the next day and 500 yards away, kind of where I was fishing at the time that he had caught it, uh, the lady I was fishing with hooks into a, into a bass. So I'm looking at this thing. It does like this big turn. I'm like, oh, wow, that's huge. So I get the, get the net out, put it in the net, hold it up. This thing came off of a bed like it had made its nest 500 yards away from where it was caught the day before. It was the same one. And it was the same fish. We got a picture of it. Had the same deformed side. Obviously, it was like the biggest smallmouth you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And we caught it 500 yards away the next day on on a nest 
Now, I don't know whether That's it was a That's not very typical. Like, usually, you can go back as many times as you want to try and find the same fish again in a tournament after pre-fishing and finding a great fish. But, like, it rarely happens. Like, during the spawn... Pretty much never. During the spawn, like, if that fish was on this, on this nest, mm-hmm. or this bed specifically, and it was caught there, mm-hmm. very easy to come back the next day and catch it again. Right. But it wasn't. It was, like, pre-spawn on the tree the day before... And then we went and we caught it on its bed the next day. Mm-hmm. And then we would, I would come back often, mm-hmm. not to try and catch it, but just to see like how long it would stay there for. Yeah. And the water in this lake's very clear. So we could see it was in about three or four feet of water. And I could see the specific yeah. fish on the nest for the following week. Mm-hmm. It stayed there for probably seven or eight days. And then it was gone. Oh, wow. Because we had a tournament coming up the following week. <laughs> so I was making sure like, okay, stay here, stay here. Yeah. But no, I was gone and never ended up catching it ever again. But yeah, I'll throw the picture up if I find it. But that was that was kind of a cool story because that, that was is. the biggest smallmouth she'd ever caught. And yeah, it was mm-hmm. it was cool. Cool to catch it two days in a row. Yeah, no kidding. So it was, sorry. I kind of missed that though. You were, you, someone in your boat caught it the first day? No, so somebody, somebody in Cole's boat caught it the other day. Like, like the, the day, first time. The day before. Yeah, right. So many okay. poles, boats. Same group of people. Right. But, caught but then it. the lady caught it in your boat the next day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. That's cool. And that's the kind of thing that people look forward to in hiring a guide, right? Or like going to a fishing lodge or hiring a guide to take them out for the day is like you kind of want to find something exciting like that. Like, yeah. You you're want hoping the fi- for it. It's not always going to happen. You want the fish of a lifetime. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, especially if that's that's the specific fish you came to find, mm-hmm. and you catch a huge one. That's right. There's been a like I've actually probably caught all of my PBs. PBs already. <laughs> I'll probably never um, catch anything bigger. Maybe with bass, but like with my trout and through the ice, my. Um, yeah, your trout. I don't think you'll beat that unless you I go like so way either. up north. But yeah, and we're my, not really my those pike kind of people that I talked about in the last one. I think you'll catch a bigger pike than that. You think so? Yeah. That was huge. Yeah, it was big, but you'll catch a bigger. Hopefully, pike. this summer during the women's walleye tournament. Yeah. That would be nice. I'll catch it then. Yeah. Yeah, me and Maddie. Officially signed up now. Sign ups were on oh, you Easter did? Sunday. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to pay me for it. <laughs> I used my card. Okay. <laughs> um, the draw for KBI happened, so if you signed up early as well, you were put into a draw. So I think there's 87 teams that signed up for the Already? early draw, which is the most that's happened in, like, years. Most that I've ever recalled. Like, how many do you think it was last year? 50. Oh, wow. Maybe seven. That's a lot. Maybe sixty. Like KBI, like the last few years, I feel like was the it, registration was open until the day of KBI because they did not have. Yeah. So this full... year, it's filling up this year for sure, and we wow. I've noticed there's a lot more American uh, teams in there as well. Yeah, they're coming back. <laughs> that was actually another thing I was thinking about the other day too, is they used to have an American and Canadian like rivalry thing going on. And like in the KBI? Yeah, so they had, from the year previous, they would have the five teams from Canada that did the best and the five teams from the U.S. that did the best. And they would each, like each team would get like their own jerseys. So the American teams had the American flag on them and then oh, the really? Canadian teams had a Canadian flag on them. Oh. And like you had to wear it throughout the whole weekend of, of the weigh-ins. So you're walking around like you're Team Canada. like Yeah. Yeah, we're Team Canada. But there's just so many of you. <laughs> Yeah, but there's, yeah, like you're the best from the year previous. Oh, I see. I only, thought you meant like all only, of the Canadian no, no, teams. No, no, no. Only five teams oh. get to represent the Canadians. And That's the five fun. teams, yeah. So they still have that kind of, it's called local versus world. But honestly, I think it's really lame and they don't have any hype around it like they used to. Yeah, they got to bring that back. Like they still have on the, or had anyways. I don't know. I don't remember recalling it from last year, but. They would have the stats of like the local teams, the five local teams that did the mm-hmm. best from the previous year or whatever. They mm-hmm. keep track of their weight, total weight from all five teams. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the world, 
which is just anybody but somebody from Kenora. <laughs> but then, like, what if you're from Kuwaitan or Longbow Lake? Or, Does that count? Or yeah. Sumeros, like, who's who? Yeah, Anyways, no, no, no. I think it's way cooler to have, like, the Canada versus America thing. Because I don't think there's anyone from any other country that comes. And if they do, then fine, that's, you can give them a shirt, too. Yeah, anyways, but there's, like, a lot of hoorah <laughs> associated with it. Like, we're better than you. Testosterone. It's like, and it's cool, because Lake of the Woods is, ha- like, obviously most of it's in Canada, but there's a good chunk of Lake of the Woods in the States as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I kind of miss that, how there was that, like, rivalry thing, and there was a lot more hype around it. Like, they had, like, a dinner. Yeah. Like, in the early stages of KBI, they had a dinner where, like, Team like Canada, a U.S., a special dinner for just them wow. that they would do. they go for their dinner and they'd They're all chat. they like royalty. Yeah. And then, you know, whoever, whatever so, team. So, who do we talk to? Is it Lacey? Lacey, if you're hearing this, if you're listening to this, which I know you're not, but if you were, or if anyone who knows her, I know her, but. <laughs> there's a reason <laughs> Whoever's they, in charge of KBI. There's a reason they did it is because the American teams dropped off kind of in the past 10 years but now we're yeah, seeing but they're coming back we're seeing a resurgence so i think we should put a lot more <laughs> hype on that i think that'd be so much fun i feel like that brings like kbi has such a good like energy to it yeah but I, to have that added on top of everything is just like a whole nother yeah i don't know a whole new thing like imagine <laughs> imagine the crowd on day three with canada versus america and that being a thing as well like yeah just another thing to cheer on mm-hmm and engage the audience you'd have a bigger turn turnout of audience maybe yeah you'd have a bigger turnout of american teams mm-hmm. you might even have a bigger turnout of canadian teams from farther away yeah wanting to come and like represent canada if there's enough hype i really feel it, like kbi should be like a 200 boat tournament you really you should. You know what I mean? Like, it. Sh- I feel like it should be so much bigger than it is. Like, it, it is was. big. It was. But it's it's not actually that big because like you think of even just um bronze back that's almost the same amount of boats same amount of teams but not nearly as much money it's half the money well no i know but i'm just saying it's not that big yeah like like it, it is like by well, i know i just mean like you think of kbi you higher think of caliber like, teams coming to the kbi of course but you think of kbi you think of like a huge tournament like you don't think of it as the same like i just don't see it as the same size as something like the bronze back right i always want to call it bassin for bucks i know that's a different tournament but like yeah i always that's why i take a second whenever i'm gonna say that but i think the reason why the bronze back has such a great turnout is because it's a more approachable tournament yeah it's right it's really, so it's it's geared towards the the majority like the whole of people community. it's not just like kind of the, like what we're trying to do with this is we're trying mm-hmm. to um be more approachable for people to to listen to us right they just give different perspectives too not just like someone who's born and raised basically fishing yeah they try to spread out the prizes too so it's all like there's a good chance you're gonna win something there's a good chance you're gonna learn something whereas the kbi the vibe around that is like it's a lot more money the the caliber Mm -hmm. of teams is higher yeah you know you have people stacking teams like you don't have like a guy fishing with his wife as much you don't no that's why i don't fish the kbi with what's you. wrong with that maybe one day but <laughs> you did say you wanted to fish it with me one day but i think that one you're day better when... off with sean for a while i have to practice a whole lot more before i feel comfortable going in the kbi just because it's such a long tournament like that's exhausting i don't really want to do it if i'm gonna just suck ass so i just i'll wait i'll and get better sean's the man so he is <laughs> exactly so i would never take that away from him and you because <laughs> that'd be pathetic and i wouldn't let you <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> i know me and maddie said that we were gonna fish kbi one year and, and take over the boys but <sighs> we'll see one day one day one day when the kids are a little older i think i could do it was that off nope okay yeah, we're still recording, but I don't know. I don't have anything else to talk about. What do you the think? The draft, Jaden. We're doing a draft? You literally said it in the last one that next week we're starting the draft. <clears throat> you, this is all your idea. This is 100% you. So, okay, well, let's go. I'm looking at Easter eggs floating on a, off of our mantle. 
Um, let's do. <laughs> let's do the your three favorite things about Easter, and I'll let you start. What's your three? Okay. So we're gonna go. This is gonna be in a draft order. So she gets the first pick. Then it's gonna come to me. Then she gets her second pick. I get mine. And then she gets her third. I get my third pick. And then we're gonna let you guys, if you're watching still, you're gonna be able to vote on who you think had the best overall team of picks for <laughs> the three best things about Easter. This is so funny because, like, I don't watch sports, and the first time he brought this to me, I had no idea what he meant by this, and I, like, I didn't understand at all, <laughs> but I'm I'm trying. Okay, so I get to pick first. I pick the Easter egg hunt for the children. For the Easter egg hunt for the kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. <clears throat> I didn't think about this at all. Like, I didn't even, like... <laughs> I know. My favorite thing about Easter, I would say... My favorite thing about Easter is the food. It's a lot of food. Yeah, the food. Like, family gathering food. Like, turkey dinner? Yep. Okay. We have... We had three turkey dinners. Yeah, we had three. This Easter. So, yeah. Good first picks by both of us. What are you going with next? This is where it gets hard because it's like there's... A... Like what else is there? Yeah. Okay, but we, over here, we really love Easter. I mean, I, Jaden's, I'm, I'm kind of like forcing it on him, but me and Carson, our daughter, adore Easter holiday just because it's kind of exciting and fun like Christmas, but with so much less stress surrounding the whole... Um, holiday are you stalling so you can get a better pick what are you no. doing um <laughs> i honestly like I don't, I don't know i got one anything dun, 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 dun. um do you want to throw up over to me nope um yeah <laughs> okay my second draft pick for the best things of Easter is the chocolate in your house for the next three months. <laughs> Does not last three months with you around. He's so weird, you guys. Like, he'll take... He, he goes You're and pours... You're again. No, I gotta tell this. So he goes and pours himself a giant cup of milk in the biggest glass that we have in the house. And he comes and sits on the couch and drinks his milk and eats all his chocolates. It's the funniest thing. I, like, never have known anyone to do that. Chocolate gets, like, stuck in your throat, before. so the milk is, like, so refreshing to wash it down. It's so funny. Anyways. Okay, that is actually, maybe that's my second pick, is <laughs> seeing Jaden with his giant glass of milk and his chocolates on the couch just watching hockey or something just like <laughs> summoning summoning <laughs> watching hockey or summoning okay <laughs> all right my third one would be when it's easter it's like you know spring is here so mm, spring okay, that's like it's just one. like the easter happens you, you know it's spring you, you might have won um This is such a weird, like, why did you, well, anyways. Because I, you, okay. you made me. This is your idea. <laughs> um, Bunny pancakes. All right. There we go. Okay, so I'll repeat my three, and then I'll, you can repeat your three. I don't even remember my three. three. Okay, I'll try. So my three is that spring, Easter is a sign of spring. Uh, my second one was that. Turkey dinners. We have chocolate in the house for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was. The food, like turkey dinner. My three were seeing the kids go on their Easter egg hunt. Um, watching <laughs> Jaden after the Easter egg hunt, devour. Sit chocolate. on the couch with his giant glass of. That's my that's my favorite part. 
<laughs> you giant glass of milk. I don't know why it's so funny, but it just is. So like, yeah, so, okay. That was my second one with your giant glass of milk and your chocolate just sitting on the couch, just devouring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my third one was, what was, <laughs> bunny pancakes. <laughs> Good one. They're so cute. Yeah. And everyone enjoys them. Okay. Well, we'll let you guys be the judge of who wins that, but... Uh, <laughs> we'll try and come up with a better draft next time. <laughs> yeah, we will. Anyways, it's getting late now, so I think we're going to be signing off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Th <laughs> thanks for watching or listening. Um, you can find us on all of the platforms that you listen to your podcasts or watch us on YouTube. Um Head on over and subscribe or follow or whatever the button may be that you need to press, press it. And uh, put your questions down below on the YouTube um, video of this podcast. We're also going to link NWO Flooring in the description of this. Yes, and for everyone who needs to get some flooring done or some tile work or... Even if you don't, you probably want to. So <laughs> give them a call. And give them a call and get an estimate. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see you guys next week on the next one.